Welcome. I'm so glad you cho chose to join us today. We're going to review how to prevent DKA for clients with diabetes mellitus type 1. I'm Jenny Erkvitz. I'm going to be your instructor for this session. So what can you expect to learn today? We are going to talk about, and I want you to get a pen and paper out, because we're going to talk about teaching points that you can use to help your clients. Remember, we have to personalize the nursing process. Remember what that nursing process is? ADPI, assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluation. We're going to talk about all five of those steps in order to help our client with diabetic ketoacidosis and in order to answer an NCLEX style question correctly. So not only is this going to benefit you for studying for the NCLEX, this is going to benefit you for real life practice. So let's get right into it. Here's our NCLEX style question. The nurse provides care for a client who is recovering from diabetic ketoacidosis. The nurse teaches the client strategies to prevent recurrence of the condition. Which preventative strategy is appropriate for the nurse to include in the teaching plan? All right, what do you think? What type of question do we have here? Is it priority? No. We are going to evaluate strategies because we want to know what to include in the teaching plan. So are we looking for something that's true or something that's false? Well, we're looking for something that's appropriate. So we're evaluating each of the answer strategy, each of the answer options. We're looking for something that is true in order to prevent a recurrence of DKA. So taking the time to stop and identify our topic, it keeps us on target. It helps us keep our focus. We avoid all those NCLEX traps that they put out there because you know what your topic is and you know that the answer choice has to match your topic. All right, what do we need to know? So at this point, you should be thinking about your content knowledge. What content knowledge do you have to help a patient prevent DKA? Well, let's talk about DKA. It's a life-threatening condition that's found in type 1 diabetes mellitus. It's caused by a lack of insulin and the body ends up drawing on fat and protein stores for energy. Ketone bodies start to accumulate because as the fat is broken down, it is broken into glucose and into ketones. So there's an increase in ketone bodies. It starts to accumulate in the, in the bloodstream. Now what does this mean? It means that the pH of the blood is going to drop. Metabolic acidosis is what develops as a result. And so the body then works to get the body back to homeostasis, right? So it's going to work to counteract that metabolic acidosis. And it results in a depletion of alkali stores. What does that mean? That means that the body is losing sodium, it's losing chloride, it's losing potassium, and it's losing water. There's increased respiration. So respiration works to counteract the metabolic acidosis. So there's increased respiration, increased urine output. DKA leads to dehydration. It leads to hypoxia. And when acidosis is severe enough, it leads to coma and then to death. So DKA, it's, it's important that we catch it immediately because if it's severe enough, it's life-threatening. Our patient could lose their life. So what do we see? How do we know if our patient is going into a diabetic coma? Well, remember, there's hypoxia. And so they're going to get that headache, confusion, drowsiness, because then they end up in a coma. So drowsiness prior to the coma. We're going to see polydipsia. Now remember, with diabetes, we expect to see if they're having uh, an acute exacerbation of diabetes, we expect to see polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. So excess hunger, excess thirst, excess urine. So they're going to have polydipsia. They're going to have a fruity breath. That's that ketones that we're, we're seeing, smelling in their respirations. So fruity breath. They're going to have dry, flushed skin, an elevated temperature. Now, this, these signs of DKA, of severe hyperglycemia, 
Some of them are similar to hypoglycemia, but some of them are opposite. That dry, flushed skin, elevated temperature. We're going to see tachycardia, hypotension, Kussmaul's respirations. Do you remember what Kussmaul's respirations are? If not, I want you to go look it up. Go back to your textbook and review it because this is an important concept to remember. What is Kussmaul's respirations? What does that have to do with DKA and impending death? Nausea and vomiting. We're going to see that with DKA. And polyuria. There it is. Okay, so, so what do we do? We've got the assessment. We've got our diagnosis. Um, what, how do we plan to help this patient? Well, we have to stop the problem before it starts. So that's the best way. Just stop it before it ever gets this bad, before they get into a coma and before they get into trouble and impending death. How do we do that? Well, one way is by administering insulin because they're hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic, excuse me. So we want to ensure that the client has enough insulin for the body's requirements. Now we're not going to just give them a huge dose of insulin. We need to be careful. So we're going to be monitoring their blood glucose so that we can prevent this before it ever happens. We need to be administering IV fluids. We need to give them electrolytes as they're needed. So that means that we need to be checking their blood glucose frequently. We need to be checking their fluid and electrolyte status. We need to be monitoring their I's and O's, their intake and outtake and output. We may also need to insert an NG tube or a urinary catheter. Uh, we're going to be monitoring ketones if the, blood if the blood glucose is over 250. So if it's higher than 250, we're going to be checking those ketones. Now, so what are some things that the patient can do? Well, the patient needs to make sure that they're taking their insulin as scheduled, that they're eating as scheduled, that they're exercising as scheduled, that they're keeping their doctor's appointments, and that they can recognize the symptoms of DKA and that they recognize when they might get into trouble, times of high stress or times of infection. All right, so we're tracking their blood glucose frequently. So we're looking for trends. Is the blood glucose trending up, trending down? Well, if it's stable, then we're going to keep doing what we're doing. They're doing everything right. Keep doing it. That means that insulin, food, and activity are in balance. If the blood glucose levels are not stable, especially if they are trending up, time out. We need to stop right there. Before we get into trouble, before we get into DKA, they need to call the doctor let them know what's going on. They need an intervention. So what are we going to do? Let's put this into the perspective of a patient, a real patient that you're seeing. All right, we have Mark, who's a 21-year-old returning home from college. He managed a rough finals week with candy and espresso. That made him feel lousy. So he didn't notice that he was also developing symptoms of the flu. When he finally checked his blood glucose, it was 675. Lots of red flags there. All right, he had a rough finals week. Stress. He managed it with candy and espresso. Bad nutrition. He was also developing the flu, illness. Oh, those three things combined and he's in trouble. Now, what was he not doing? He didn't catch this because it says he finally checked his blood glucose. So he wasn't checking it regularly. And now all of a sudden, it's 675. He's in trouble. So what caused this? Increased stress, poor nutrition, illness, and he wasn't checking his blood glucose. So here's your takeaway. Write this down. Blood glucose monitoring is the single most important tool we can give clients with diabetes mellitus to help them manage their health and prevent complications. Most important thing, clients who have diabetes type 1, they have to consistently monitor their blood glucose. They have to recognize those trends, whether it's trending up or trending down. This will prevent a crisis like DKA.
All right, what are we going to do with Mark? <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Now the nurse provides care for Mark, who is recovering from DKA. The nurse teaches Mark strategies to prevent recurrence of the condition. Which preventative strategy is appropriate for the nurse to include in the teaching plan? Did you notice this question is the same as the one at the beginning? It's just we put a patient name with it. We put a patient face with it. So now we are going to tailor our teaching to Mark. So what's appropriate to include in the teaching plan? What is true? What will help Mark prevent recurrence of DKA? Well, let's look at these. Eat six small meals per day. Will that help Mark prevent recurrence of DKA? Was that his problem? That wasn't his problem. His problem was he wasn't checking his blood glucose. So we can eliminate that one. We don't know how many meals he was eating a day. Number two, maintain appropriate follow-up care. Will that help Mark prevent recurrence of DKA? No, that wasn't his problem. We don't know if he was maintaining his doctor's appointments. We don't know. Monitor blood glucose levels frequently. Will that help Mark prevent recurrence of DKA? Yeah, that was his problem. He wasn't checking his blood sugar. And then he had all these issues that combined to create this issue of DKA. He could have figured it out earlier and increased his insulin intake because of the stress, because of his poor nutrition. But he wasn't checking his blood glucose. Let's hang on to that one. Test urine for ketone levels. Will that help Mark prevent recurrence of DKA? No, that wasn't his problem either. That wasn't necessary. So our correct answer was number three. Now, I know you're saying, but all of those could have been correct answers for preventing recurrence of DKA, and sure, they could have. But we're talking about Mark here, not just any old patient. We're talking about Mark. You know his situation. You know what happened. And you also know now that the number one way to prevent DKA is to monitor blood glucose levels frequently. That's going to help Mark. It's going to help other patients with diabetes type 1 to help avoid DKA, to stop the problem, stop the cascade before they get into trouble. All right, so what would you learn today? Check your notes. Did you write these down? Did you identify the important teaching points for helping patients prevent DKA? Do you remember what that was? Did you identify all five steps of the nursing process? ADPI, remember, assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Did you identify all five of those steps that we used to help Mark and to correctly answer that NCLEX-style question? I hope you have those down in your notes. Thank you and have a good day.